So welcome back to another episode of Steve Talks About Night Vision Stuff. In the last video, we talked about bayonets versus dovetail mounts. In this video, we're gonna dive into each one of the options that are currently available and highlight some of the features so you can figure out which one works best for you. So I really think that every person has different requirements. So rather than just getting, you know, whatever looks cool, uh, you should be looking for the mount that satisfies your own requirements and budget. So this video is gonna be long, so I've timestamped everything down below. So rather than talking about each specific mount to start, I'll go over what most modern mounts have in terms of a standard feature set. The primary purpose of the mount is to hold your night vision device. So whether that's your binoculars or a uh, binocular with an arm, the primary job is to hold it securely. The secondary role really is to place the device exactly where your eyes should be. In any night vision mount, there should be three adjustments, up and down, forward and backward, and tilt. So the three biggest difference between all the mounts here is gonna be range of adjustment for these three areas, where it places device when it's stowed and not in use, and whether or not it has breakaway. So let's start with the classic Rhino mount. This is the very basic mount that we talked about in our last video. It doesn't have the up and down adjustment, so you actually have to tilt your head up or down to get the device where you need. You can actually use the JRM to help you out a little bit in the sort of up and down department. Um, this J-arm actually has a thumb screw right here, so you can actually loosen this. And you can see down here it's got some teeth, but basically you would shift it up and sort of rotate it to where you need and then tighten it back down to set it. So this would help you out if you wanted to use the Rhino mount to kind of dial it in correctly. Again, it's not going to be, you know, the most necessarily ideal mount. Uh, it's got quite a bit of wobble. You know, it's only got two positions really down and then basically straight up. So you see essentially what you have now is the device kind of faces the opposite way. Um, might not be ideal if you're doing force on force things, you need to protect the rear lens. Um, what is nice about this is that it kind of places it over and on top of your head. So it kind of removes that frontal helmet weight and kind of moves that closer to your head essentially. Another thing I wanted to mention is that it uses the force to overcome system. What that means is rather than having like a button or anything like that, you basically just grab this whole thing and, and you just force it up. Um, it's got a somewhat of a positive lock on the bottom. Uh, the only thing you have to be careful for is there is a release lever right here. So if you kind of are kind of clumsy and, and whatnot, you, you might hit that kind of on your way to grabbing it. So just practice with grabbing it here and, and forcing it up. So next up is the Wilcox G11 mount. I think a lot of people pass over this mount just because it's bayonet, but it actually solves a lot of the problems that the legacy Rhino mount has. Um, and functionally, it's actually quite similar to, you know, a much higher priced dovetail system. So the G11 actually has, you know, all of the adjustments that most modern mounts have. It adds now the up and down adjustment that the Rhino was lacking. Uh, has the tilt adjustment over here on the left and you know has the very positive rail slide the biggest well, two two biggest differences is one is the release lever for this is now protected so you no longer have the risk of just accidentally activating it you now have to very consciously go in and push this button to release it the next improvement is the worm drive that's here at the back so if you notice here, it says NVG lock, tighten and loosen. So basically what this is, is a little worm drive that takes, actually takes up all of the slack that is associated with the bayonet mount. So once you actually get it dialed in, um, it's actually quite solid. Like you don't actually get any of that wobble that was part of the Rhino system. Uh, still forced to overcome, but rather than putting the device over your head, it has the more, I guess, modern way of mounting, which is kind of a little bit out and in front of you. So that's the Wilcox G11. Um, as I said before, this mount actually costs about less than half of what um, you know a comparable Wilcox dovetail mount costs. And you can save even more money because you don't have to get a J arm. You can actually just use the bayonet arm that your PVS-14 ships with. So I'll put a link in the description box down below. So moving on to dovetail systems, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the G24 and that whole family of Wilcox mounts together because the range of adjustments and the stow angle are gonna be fairly similar. Uh, so on the left here, we have the G22E, this is the G24, and this is the G66. Um, Wilcox also makes a few other ones like the G69 and the G70, which uh, not showing here, but uh, some experience with. But they all kind of operate under the same principles. The, uh, the adjustments are all the same. The uh, stow angle is the same. Um, so let's kind of get into it. 
So the stow angle is basically going to be about a 45 degree angle to your head. Uh, it's not going to be too far above your head um, and it's not going to be too far out. Um, the G24 is basically the most ubiquitous out of the mounts here. Uh, the G22E that is right here uh, on the helmet right now is going to be very similar to the G24. The only difference is that one has breakaway, so you'll notice that it has this little plate here, and one does not. So a lot of people kind of get this confused about how the breakaway feature works, but all it really is is, uh, so you see here this little engagement tooth here that's on both of these mounts. So all the breakaway does is when you, so when I kind of flip this over, you notice all that changes is sort of the engagement distance of that tooth. So that's what sort of allows it to break away. Um, it just engages with the shroud a little less so that with a certain amount of flex, a certain amount of force, this whole mount would essentially just come off of the shroud itself. Um, there's no kind of fancy voodoo magic or anything like that. That's literally all it is. It's just the, the, the engagement distance of that tooth. So you can see here, this is the breakaway mode and this is the non-breakaway. And then if you flip it back, it's sort of now a little bit more protruded. So um, the primary difference between the G24 and the G22E is uh, well, well, the breakaway and also the fact that um, the G22E has this extended travel rail. So, so if you kind of compare them side by side, um, you know, the 22E is further. Now the G24s, if they're you know 2021 and newer, um, will basically have the same length travel rail as the G22E, so with breakaway. Um, I don't jump out of airplanes or fast roll or anything like that, so I actually never really found a need for the breakaway anyway. Um, and I don't really feel like that I need that feature, so uh, that's why the G22E might be the, might be the mount for you. And then lastly, if you kind of take this a step further of not needing the breakaway at all, um, within this family mounts, Wilcox makes a series of what they call permanent mounts. So like this G66 here. So it's permanent because these mounts completely eliminate the need for a shroud and just bolt directly to your helmet itself. So, you know, if you definitely don't need breakaway, um, this is basically a mount for you. It's, it's substantially lighter. It removes all of these uh, extraneous plates and whatnot, completely removes the shroud uh, and it bolts directly into your helmet. Um, so. It's, it's basically going to be more rigid, um, but you kind of lose that ability to say, sort of separate this mount if you wanted to. So again, you'll just think about whether or not you need the breakaway, and if you don't, you know, kind of give these more, give these permanent mounts a bit of a look. So next up is the Nerodos AKA2. So Nerodos has actually been around for a long time. Uh, they've been making mounts for the Marines for a really long time. This used to be issued with the PVS 15s. Um, and the biggest difference here is that rather than having two positions, this one actually has three. So if you kind of picture this is basically deployed, um, and then we have the up position, which is up and over, kind of similar to Rhino. So it kind of sits high above your head, but over your head sort of. But it also has a third position, which is sort of out and in front of you. Um, this one, in this mode, you'll see that here, it basically follows the same plane as the top of your head. So if you're kind of working in uh, vehicles and Areas with low clearance, you don't have to worry about your device kind of smashing your device on, uh, you know, overhangs and things like that. You know, the adjustments are going to be fairly similar. Um, the controls are going to be a little bit different. So instead of having a lever, this one has a bit of a worm drive. And then instead of having it be notched, uh, the, you know, the fore and aft rail is basically sort of infinitely adjustable. It sort of slides along this rail um, and then you basically tighten it down with this, uh, with this lever here. What's also cool about this is that you actually have the ability to separate um, this entire carriage and substitute this for a dovetail carriage. So I'll see, let's see if I can do that now. So you can actually separate this whole sled and then you can basically slide on uh, you know, a bayonet carriage if you wanted to. So kind of modular, kind of neat. Um, starting to be, become a bit more rare now, but very, still, very much still relevant. Uh, very much in use. I actually prefer this in some ways to, you know, the Wilcox mounts just because of the fact that it's quite solid, doesn't wobble as much, um, and it has a very positive locking mechanism. Um, so, you know, very viable option still, so keep an eye out for that. So lastly, we have the Cadex. So this is the same company that's making long-range precision rifles, and for whatever reason, they decided to make some night vision mounts. So 
This is a result of what they've done. Uh, the range of adjustments and how it's stowed is going to be fairly similar to the Wilcox line of mounts, but the fore and aft travel is going to be substantially farther. So if you kind of pay attention here, it gets the device closer to your eye, but also it gets it really far away in front of your face as well. If you're using gas masks or paintball masks or whatever you're using. Um, so in some situations, like if you're running like a ballistic helmet, like this airframe right now, uh, the thickness of the, the helmet plus the shroud means that the night vision device sometimes gets ends up being, being pretty far in front of you. Uh, lastly, the CADEX also has a breakaway feature. So, you know, it has this little lever here and I guess basically it works the same way. Um, so if you kind of look here at the release tooth, as I kind of turn this knob, it just basically shrinks, it basically just shrinks that tooth up and down. So. Basically, that's how you enable or disable the breakaway feature. So it has that as well. Um, the Cadex is about $300 less um, than the Wilcox. Most of the control surfaces are made out of metal. So the up and down is made out of metal. The tilt lever is made out of metal. Uh, basically, everything is made out of metal except for this release knob. Um, so it's gonna be a lot, lot more durable, made in Canada. And again, I'll put the link in the description box down below. So there you have it, almost all the mount solutions that's out there today. There's probably some that I've missed. So let us know down in the comments and we might cover it in a follow-up video. Hope you found this helpful. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and hit the bell so you get notified when we post new videos. And we'll see you on the next one.